So let's get into how serious this is. I mean, what if I go over to a friend's house, I'm being served, you know, a healthy meal that I know is containing lectins. Is this an all or nothing thing? Or is it like, okay, I'm having one meal, you know, and getting other benefits being with community, like I can I can go back to my regular low lectin plan later. Basically, how many lectins does it take to cause issues like with leaky gut? Yeah, so that depends. Um, and it depends really on a number of factors that I've written about in The Plant Paradox. Um, normally, if you were a traditional culture, number one, you would prepare foods to detoxify lectins, either through fermentation processes or multiple soakings and changes of water and long, prolonged cooking. And traditional cultures have always figured this out. For instance, the Italians always peel and de-seed their tomatoes before they make tomato sauce because they've learned that that's where you know, the lectins are. On the other hand, most traditional cultures have a really robust, diverse microbiome. And the microbiome is a major defensive wall against lectins. The bugs actually like lectins. We actually have bacteria that enjoy eating gluten, thinks gluten is delicious. And our widespread use of antibiotics, either that we personally have taken or that's in most of our animal products, uh, has wiped out the diversity of our microbiome. So we're, you know, we're now on the fourth string defensive line and all of our first, second, and third stringers are out injured or on the injured reserve list. And it's no wonder, you know, the linebackers are sacking my quarterback every time because we just don't have those defense systems. And, you know, yeah, lect it's a, it's, a, it's a war between plants and their predators. And it's actually a pretty doggone good balance. Now, to answer your question, um, most of us, if we eat, if we have a diverse microbiome, if we don't have leaky gut, can withstand the occasional assault from heavy lectin-containing foods. But what's so fascinating with my practice in autoimmune disease patients is one little harmless cheat uh, usually sets us back wide open. And that's unfortunate, but it's uh, how uh, folks with autoimmune disease have to play the game. But again, getting back to the energy paradox, the more we can actually have a diverse microbiome, the more we can give our microbiome the things they want to eat, uh, the better our defense system is. 